let us worship God. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. We continue the service in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will take a hymn of praise, P820. The first and the second stanzas only. this time to thank God for how far the Lord has brought you, for giving us another beautiful day, a day that we're going to receive blessings from God. Thank God. Thank God for your family, the gift of life. Thank God for the church and her agents. Those who have taken the lead, those who are in retirement, and those of us who are still in active service. We are in the presence of God. Shall we tell him our shortcomings? Let's confess our sins so that the devil will not have any foothold on us today. Commit the day service, the divine service to the hands of God. That whatever your challenge, whatever problem that you have come here with, may the head of the church himself look upon you with favor. So that you never leave here the same as you came. Bring your prayers to a close and follow me with your heart as I pray. Almighty God, who has made the church your dwelling place, be pleased to manifest yourself to us, your servants, 
who meet this day in this holy place, inspire our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Almighty Father, accept us as we dedicate ourselves anew to you and enable us by your grace to obey you in all things and to yield our hearts and lives to your service. Grant unto us a purer love to you, a deeper devotion to our Lord and Savior, a truer loyalty to your church, and a stronger desire to proclaim your kinship and to glorify your name. We ask for these things through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns and is worshipped and glorified with you and the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 28 to 38. Shall we listen to the word of God? So guard yourselves and God's people. Feed and shepherd God's flock, his church, purchased with his own blood, over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as elders. I know that false teachers like vicious wolves will come in among you after I leave, not sparing the flock. Even some men from your own group will rise up and distort the truth in order to draw a following. Watch out. Remember the three years I was with you, my constant watch and care over you night and day, and my many tears for you. And now I entrust you to God and the message of his grace that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance with all those he has set apart for himself. I have never coveted anyone's silver or gold or fine clothes. You know that these hands of mine have worked to supply my own needs and even the needs of those who were with me. And I have been a constant example of how you can help those in need by working hard. You should remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. When he had finished speaking, he knelt down and prayed with them. They all cried as they embraced and kissed him goodbye. They were sad, most of all, because he said that they would never see his face again. Then they escorted him down to the ship. This is the word of God.
Father, the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you, O God, our Redeemer. Amen. I bring you greetings from the Presbyterian Women's Centre, Abokobi. And I want to take this opportunity to thank my bosses, the moderator of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana and the clerk of General Assembly for giving me this opportunity to deliver the sermon for this August occasion. I've chosen the theme for discussion, let Christ be formed in you, gaining ground for God's kingdom. In a world where culture seems to dictate what is right from wrong, and more often, we taking our cues from exposés on television, it often feels like the church is losing ground. Instead of us being an influence on society, we are rather victims of society's influences. We are in a period where false prophets and us, Acts 2030 puts it, savage wolves abound in the country, distorting the word of God, the truth, preaching mostly about prosperity in order to draw followers to them. Nonetheless, we need to remind ourselves that God uses his minister's abilities to speak words of life, 1 Peter 4, 11. It is based on this that Paul's journey to Jerusalem when his ship docked at Melitos, he sent for the elders of the church of Ephesus, which is 25 miles away from where he was. This was very necessary to ensure he keeps them on toes of all that he had taught them. It is essential in our lives as Christians not only to hold our grounds, but to actually gain grounds for God's kingdom. In our personal lives, we sometimes find ourselves losing ground as well, and often wander in dilemma over our situation. That is, trying to ascertain the exact things we do that are wrong. How do we stop this regression in order to move forward? Paul said, Life is worth nothing unless I use it to do the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus Christ. Telling others the work of the good news and about God's mighty kindness and love. Acts 20, verse 24. Gaining grounds for me simply means doing exploits for the Lord. Paul states categorically that you have been selected by the Holy Spirit, and so the responsibility of shepherding the flock which Jesus purchased with his blood. Therefore, the Holy Spirit will hold everyone accountable as overseers. Acts 20, verse 28. Who are these flocks? They are the very people in your congregation and the others who you will win in your mission. Remember, no one gives a tax without support. Paul reminded them to emulate his example of doing ministry, showing tender care to those with him and supporting them. Again, he reminded them that he never shrank from telling them the truth of God's message. Acts 20, verse 27, which means you are to give them the sincere milk of the word, which they are to desire, so they may grow. First Peter 2, 2. We are all giving different gifts according to the grace given us, and that we should use it in proportion to our faith. In like manner, Peter speaks about the duty of God called, God gifted, and God appointed. To be apt, each have been gifted with different talents, strengths, 
us with weaknesses. What would be your honest response if I asked you which category would you place yourself? Nonetheless, the responsibility is the same for each and every one of us. Shepherd the flock under your care was the instruction given to Peter. When Jesus, on three counts, asked him whether he loved him, feed my flock, and finally care for my flock, he said. In this regard, he was to oversee the flock not out of compulsion, but because of his willingness to work for the Lord as he said, yes, I love you. You know I love you. Thus, not a highling who only worked for his wages, but someone who was eager to do God's will and never abuse his authority with arrogance, but being an example to the flock. Paul giving his farewell message to the leaders of Ephesus in Melitus, asked them to emulate him, and he entreated Timothy, his son in the Lord, to set good examples to his flock. It is important to note that the Lord puts the desire of ministry in our hearts, 1 Timothy 3, 1, and the Holy Spirit does the selection. Remember that those who are called to carry good news have beautiful feet. Isaiah 52, verse 7. In like manner, having been fortunate to be selected for training and exposure for five years, go and also be examples to your flock. In gaining grounds, Jesus started gaining grounds for the Lord. Jesus opened up a new avenue for us to come to God. We can live for eternity because of the salvation he brought so that we need to be active. The feet speak of activity, motion, and progress. Of those who are very active and moving in the work of preaching the gospel. I therefore implore you to go with great zeal to do exploits for the Lord at a period when the church is talking about 1.5 million. It is a beautiful thing when people proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. The world is desperately in need of good news in this pandemic era. And without a shadow of doubt, we all have it within us. For being Christians for some time, we have the word of God. The only way that the gospel will be heard is if we go forth and reach out to the, tell the people. Today, I encourage you to put your feet more seriously to the gospel. Spreading the gospel brings peace. This message of good news brings peace to those who believe. It settles those souls that desperately seek to fill that void in their hearts. It brings encouragement to those who have been beaten down by disappointments or lost their way. Proclaim to those around you that Jesus says he is the way, the truth, and the life. But how do you go? We need the right shoes. In Ephesians 6, 15 to 18, the apostle Paul describes the spiritual armor that we must put on if we are to be victorious in the Christian life. He mentions the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. All these things were represented in the various pieces of a Roman soldier's armor, which Paul would have had the opportunity to study since he was under guard for so long. But one other thing that Paul lists, which is 
every bit as important to the Roman soldier's armor as a shield or breastplate was a sol soldier's shoes. Paul says that you should have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Ephesians 6 verse 15. When you or I go to look for shoes, we may put style to the top of the list. But many of the shoes we think look great simply are at best of times not very practical. A friend of mine in a chat said his shins felt achy and suspected his shoes were the cause. So he went to an athletic shoes outlet to purchase something more fitting and egg free. The sales attendant, as his custom, put him on a treadmill to ascertain the, co ascertain the course and suggest which trainers was best for him. He told my friend, I now know what your problem is. You pronate when you walk. And instead of asking what it meant, as he did not have any idea, he rather got offended. Basically, pronate means he puts most of his weight on the inside edge of his feet. You need more support, he said. You need a firm soul. Finally, Chuck got the appropriate shoes with firmer soles for running. The point here is just as Chuck needed the right shoes, so do we. Keep your firm foundation and remain steady on Jesus Christ and remain in him as he equips all those who call. Brethren in the Lord, we are soldiers in the Lord's army. Hands down, Chuck said, my favorite shoe is the Converse one. I pretty much live in them, despite the fact that they have little to no act support. But the shoes of the soldier has to be functional. They need to have three qualities. One, they should have good grip giving traction and solid footing in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Losing your footing can easily be deadly. Two, the shoes also have to be tough to protect the foot from spikes or sharp rocks. Otherwise, one faulty step could puncture the soldier's feet and would be out of commission. Three, the shoes need to be light, giving the soldier the mobility to cross a hundred meter of open field in a minute. But what exactly does this mean in a spiritual battle? In the original Greek, the word preparation used in Ephesians 6.15 can be defined as firm footing, a strong foundation, we need to have a firm foundation in God's word. I assume that having gone through your probation for two years, studied under the tutelage of seasoned ministers, you have acquired all that it takes to be a full minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This word preparation could also be translated as readiness. The idea is to be ready to share the gospel at any time. Scripture tells us that as believers, we should be on duty at all times. You never know when an opportunity will arise for you to share the gospel somewhere else out of your comfort zone, like I'm doing this morning. Again, it is the idea of being ready and willing to move at a moment's 
at a moment's notice. Such opportunities to share the gospel often comes when we least expect. Do not think your head pastor will do everything at any given time. He or she can delegate you to go and deliver. Will you be ready for that? Get on your guards. Delivering the gospel on foot. This is how we gain grounds for the kingdom of God. By sharing our faith. Remember the primary way that God reached people is through people. People like you and I. He needs your availability as well as your ability. When was the last time you looked for an opportunity to communicate the gospel one on one? When was the last time you prayed for an unsaved person by name to come to Christ? When was the last time you personally brought a non-believer to church with you? Yet, we want our congregations to grow while we, who claim called, are practically doing nothing. The era in which we are does not call for crusades or large gathering, but one on one. Beloved, we cannot fail our Lord. He has bought us and the flock we are pastoring with a price, and we need to do it with care. Ezekiel 34, verse 8, gave a divine rebuke to the Israelite leaders for feeding themselves without feeding their flock. He will seek for those, for them to feed them and care for them, inasmuch as he will search, destroy, and feed such wicked leaders with judgment. Ezekiel 34, 15, and 16. I honestly believe that the key to personal revival is the ability and desire to share your faith. The gospel by design is not to be hoarded. It's to be shared. And as you share this life-giving message with others, it's also a life-giving message to you. Ask the Lord for an opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ with someone today. Several ministers in our time have relaxed as chapel keepers and pulpit ministers. They show no interest in evangelism, but there is something beautiful and encouraging to consider. The call to a life of joyful servitude and the willingness to face suffering is in itself a grace. In calling me to deny myself, God is freeing me from my bondage, and I believe it's the same for you. Self-focus never leads to happiness. It neither breeds contentment nor results in heartfelt joy. The more a leader places the main focus on himself or herself, the more he thinks of how ministry inconveniences him or her. The experience of true joy and lasting contentment will always elude him or her. The call to servanthood is the tool that your Lord uses to free you from your discouraging and weakening bondage. Some of you may be leaving your training grounds to other districts and presbyteries. To be ministers in charge, others may still be second ministers. Whatever it is, you may be working under your district minister or a senior minister. Give them all the respect and work with humility. We do not need to be haughty just for the fact that you see yourself as audacious, very hot for the Lord, or better in academics. You need to be a team player and season 
your speech. Respect the congregants as you expect them to accord you same. By so doing, you will have support in your ministry. The call to servanthood is not just for the glory of your Lord and the benefit of others, but also God's grace to you to minister in the community. The pathway to freedom is servitude. The pathway to greatness is slavery. And the pathway to deep and lasting joy, joy, that people and circumstances cannot take away from you is denying yourself. Hypocritical theological arrogance is not the fruit of servants. Servants heart. Pride of accomplishment contradicts servants' humility. Disrespect of the vital gifts of human to the health of the body of Christ fails to mirror the servant heart of Jesus. Treating your church as if it belongs to you defeats the very idea of you calling yourself a servant. Resistance in the face of a loving advice, concern, watchfulness, and rebuke of fellow leaders is resistance against your position as a servant. Exercising your leadership position in a way that is more radical than pastoral does not flow from the heart of a servant. Treating staff members as if they are at your beck and call rather than working together with you, serving the Lord happily when you forget your core mandate, which is a call to serve. It is only the grace of the Redeemer that will make a leader of a ministry find joy in the upside down world of ministry to which you have been called. As a probationer, looking forward to be ordained, have you entered into that joy? Or has it been rubbed by delusion of mastery? In conclusion, suffice me to say, let us do ministry as the chosen race and not as highlings, as people who have been empowered by the Holy Spirit. Do ministry as if Christ is coming today for accountability. Do ministry as team players, working as a team with all the combined gifts accorded us, makes us a strong force to gain grounds for God's kingdom. Do ministry wholeheartedly and experience the joy of it. And finally, do ministry as grace has identified you and given you the opportunity to serve as a minister. And to the congregation, we are all called to do ministry for the Lord. We are all called to do exploits for the Lord. And so, do not wait for the minister alone. We all need to go out there and evangelize. Tell them about the good news. Tell them about the love of God. Tell them about salvation. And together, we shall be moving our church forward to 1.5. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you very much. And we pray that you strengthen us that we will go out there and do exploits for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Moderator said, these persons standing before us here have gone through the mandatory two-year probationary service in the church. They have all been recommended by their presbyteries, and the General Assembly Council has approved or affirmed the recommendation. They are now ready to be ordained into the Holy Ministry so I hand them over to you, so that together with your team, you will lay and impose your hands on them and bless them, finally giving them a charge. Thank you so much, Moderator.
Now shall we bring our minds to this act of ordination. Our brothers and sisters in Christ, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the King and Head of the Church, who being ascended on high, has given gifts unto people for the building up of the body of Christ. We have met here by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana to ordain the Reverend Gifty Abuaji, Samuel Asanti Ejakwa, Anthony Anum, Stephen Ni Ama Aite, Vincent Diewu, Jonas Tetejangwa, Wilson Awiri Jebi, Jeffrey Mengel, Abraham Ofosu Ofori, Joseph Kwate Kote, Felix Tetepo, and Samuel Mensa Zongo. To the office of the Holy Ministry, by prayer, and by the laying on of hands, by those of us who are called to do so. Now, in this act of ordination, the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, as part of the Universal Church, worshiping one God who alone is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, affirms anew his belief in the gospel of the sovereign grace and love of God. Through Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, incarnate, crucified, and risen, God freely offers to all people, upon repentance and faith, the forgiveness of sins, renewal by the Holy Spirit and eternal life. He commissions them to labor in the fellowship of faith and to call all people throughout the world to enter into his kingdom. Shall we all bow our heads now in prayer? Almighty God who gave the church people to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. Graciously behold these, your servants, whom we, in dependence on Christ, the head of the church, are setting apart for the same ministry. O oh God, confirm for them the call they have received from you, and do them, O oh Lord, with power from on high. For Jesus Christ's sake we pray. Amen. Amen. We are going to pray for them. We pray for the Holy Spirit strength and guidance throughout this journey. The journey in ministry can be very rough. May the Lord surround them with power from on high. May the Lord endure them in a special way. May the Lord go ahead of them and behind them and around them. May the Lord be with their families, their spouses, their children, and uh, their present and their future. In the name of Jesus, may their ministries be successful and a blessing. Oh, stretch forth your hand wherever you are upon them, and I want you to pray that the power of God will really lead them and guide them through. Now, King of glory, King of kings, Lord of lords, here standing before you are your own chosen 12 apostles who have said in their hearts, Lord, here we are, send us. We bring them all before you, God, that your light will shine upon them, that they will drive darkness out of the way of people who come to them. Lord, that you will feed them with your divine bread, that all who come to them will also be fed with the daily bread. That, Lord, you quench their thirst yes, with living waters. In the name of Jesus. That they will be in their churches, in their congregations, yes, quenching the thirst of all congregants. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that they will also experience a special transfiguration, O oh God. Evidence you stretch forth your hand upon them. May heaven come down upon them. Yes. That your glory will fill their souls. That today they will receive a mark on their foreheads, in their hearts, in their ministry. That they will be very special to all people they encounter. We thank you, God, that you have fought all their battles for them. And you declare upon them that they are more than conquerors. We thank you for hearing us. Especially that we've prayed in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and our Lord, 
Amen. We continue in prayer. Send down, O oh God, your Holy Spirit in a special way upon this your servant standing before you, whom we, in obedience to your blessed word, are ordaining to the office of the ministry. Cleanse them, O oh God, from all defilement of body and spirit, like you did for Isaiah. Lord, touch their lips with a burning coal from your altar. Equip them with the gifts of your grace, that they may boldly proclaim your word and your will. Make them a light to those who sit in darkness, watchful and loving guardians over your flock, that in all things they may fulfill their ministry without reproach, and in the end be received with all your faithful servants into the joy of their Lord through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Now, Reverend Gifty Abuaji, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you a lawful minister of the Church of Christ and commit unto you the ministry of the Word and Sacraments instituted by Christ our Lord. May the Lord endure you with power from on high and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit. And may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and with your spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciple. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. Amen. Amen. Reverend Samuel Asante Ejakwa, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you a lawful minister of the Church of Christ and commit unto you the ministry of the Word and Sacraments instituted by Christ our Lord. May the Lord endure you with power from on high and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage. Rest in the Lord. And wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus Christ be with you and with your spirit. Amen. 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 Jesus says, By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciple. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. Amen. Amen. Reverend Anthony, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you a lawful minister of the Church of Christ, and commit unto you the ministry of the Word and Sacraments, instituted by Christ our Lord. May the Lord endure you with power from on high, and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit, and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage, rest in the Lord, and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and with your spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciple. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. 
Amen. Amen. Reverend Stephen Ni Ama Aite, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you a lawful minister of the Church of Christ and commit unto you the ministry of the word and sacraments instituted by Christ our Lord. The Lord endure you with power from on high and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage, rest in the Lord, and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and with your spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. Amen. Amen. Reverend Vincent Diewu, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you a lawful minister of the Church of Christ and commit unto you the ministry of the Word and Sacraments instituted by Christ our Lord. May the Lord undo you with power from on high and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and with your spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, by this my father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. Amen. Amen. Reverend Jonas Tetejangma, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you a lawful minister of the Church of Christ and commit unto you the ministry of the Word and Sacraments instituted by Christ our Lord. May the Lord endure you with power from on high and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit, and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage, rest in the Lord, and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and with your spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, by this, my father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. Amen. Amen. Now, Reverend Wilson, I will read In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you a lawful minister of the Church of Christ and commit unto you the ministry of the Word and Sacraments instituted by Christ our Lord. May the Lord endure you with power from on high and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage, rest in the Lord, and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you, and with your spirit, amen. Amen. Jesus says, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you, 
that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. Amen. Amen. Now, Reverend Jeffrey Mingle, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you a lawful minister of the Church of Christ and commit unto you the ministry of the word and sacraments instituted by Christ our Lord. The Lord endure you with power from on high and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit. And may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. 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 The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and with your spirit. Amen. 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 Jesus says, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. Amen. 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 Reverend Abraham Ofusu Ofori, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you a lawful minister of the Church of Christ and commit unto you the ministry of the Word and Sacraments instituted by Christ our Lord. The Lord endure you with power from on high and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and with your spirit. Amen. 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 Jesus says, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. Amen. 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 Joseph Pater Corte. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you a lawful minister of the Church of Christ, Christ and commit unto you the ministry of the Word and Sacraments instituted by Christ our Lord. The Lord endure you with power from on high and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit, and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and with your spirit. Amen. 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 Jesus says, by this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. Amen. Amen. Reverend Felix Tetepo, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you a lawful minister of the Church of Christ and commit unto you the ministry of the word and sacraments instituted by Christ our Lord. The Lord endure you with power from on high and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you 
and your spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide. Amen. Amen. Reverend Samuel Mensah Zongo, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and by the authority of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, I appoint and ordain you a lawful minister of the Church of Christ and commit unto you the ministry of the word and sacraments instituted by Christ our Lord. May the Lord endure you with power from on high and make you a blessing unto many. May he himself ordain you to go and bring forth much fruit and may your fruit remain unto eternal life. Amen. The Lord be your light and your salvation. The Lord be the strength of your life. Be of good courage. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him. The Lord Jesus be with you and with your spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. Amen. Amen. Now you have been ordained, and I will ask the clerk of the assembly to lead you together with some of the senior ministers to go and dress properly as ordained ministers and come and show me that you are ordained. <laughs> clerk of General Assembly. Reverend Samuel Asanti Ejakwa, Reverend Anthony Anum, Reverend Stephen Ni Ama Aite, Reverend Vincent Diewu, Reverend Jonas Tete Jangma, Reverend Wilson Awe Ijebi, Reverend Jeffrey Mingo, Reverend Abraham Ofusu Ofori, Reverend Joseph Kwate Korte, Reverend Felix Tetepo, and Reverend Samuel Mensah Zongo. I, as moderator, now declare you to have been ordained to the office of the Holy Ministry. So I charge you now to go and feed the flock of God and tend them, not by constraint, but willingly, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not as domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd is manifested, you will obtain the unfading crown of glory. So go and be a blessing unto many. Go and preach Jesus, go and teach Jesus, go and heal the sick. You now have the power to even speak in the name of the church. God bless you and welcome to the ordained ministry. May God who has contained us also contain you and take you through safely. And I know he will.
He will be your shepherd and he will walk you through. Congratulations once again and God bless you. We will bring the service to an end as we take our closing hymn, Yehovah, 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 after which the moderator of the General Assembly will give us the benediction and dismiss us. Unto God's gracious mercies and protection, we all commit ourselves. Unto God's gracious mercies and protection, I commit you all. Brethren, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord God of Israel lift up the light of his countenance upon all of us and give us his peace, his real shalom, even now and evermore. And the blessing of God Almighty, who alone is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Rest and abide with all of us now and evermore. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word of God says in John 15, 16, that you did not choose me, but I chose you to bear much fruit. That is what we saw today. It is my prayer that all of us who are being called into this ordained ministry, we shall hearken to the voice of God so we can go and also bear fruit. This program has been supported by many of us. We say God richly bless you. And if you want to donate towards this worthy cause for the expansion of the kingdom of God, kindly donate to the account details on your screen and we shall duly acknowledge your donations. We say God richly bless you. If you have any counseling needs, we humbly request that you call the numbers on your screen and you will be attended to. Our team of counselors are on hand to attend to your counseling needs in your Christian journey. The Lord be with you as we bring Kamo. Amen.